Lord forgive me for this trap shit. It's hard to smack, make it backflip. Tell he hanged it with the action. With the vital speaking Spanish. Frank Matthews, how I vanish. Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut. Go BBS is on a beamer. When fat cat was tearing queens up. Fall off the prop and not the re up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus. Uptown like I'm baby major for the touchdown from the bay. Now, once again, what you're not saying for Luis Felipe. Imagine sitting in the courtroom, Judge Martin is sitting there, yeah, Billy the Kid did it, all these Western good, oh, Barney and Clyde, there was gangsters in America before the Latin King, folks, you make movies about them cats, you honor them, you played them. So Luis Felipe, because he's a light key, and he ain't got the bodies none of these cats had. 145 years. 45 years no human contact. 45 years no phone call. 45 years no mail. 45 years. That's not a draconian sentence when I, once again, you don't treat traitors like that. What is the signal you're sending to black and Latino Americans in gangs, right? This is what I'm saying. De estos dos hombres, ambos son latinos y se encuentran presos en una cárcel de Nueva York. Este es Luis Felipe, conocido como King Blood o Rey Sangre. Good evening. Politicians from several states tonight are sharply criticizing President Carter's handling of the Cuban refugee problem. The governor of Texas, Bill Clements, says the president has literally opened the floodgates, placing no limitations on the number of Cubans entering the United States. Today, the Cuban sea lift slowed a bit, but since last month, 25,000 refugees from Castro's Cuba have come to America. Between midnight and noon today, 23 boats filled with over 800 Cubans reach Key West, Florida. U.S. Marines are now on duty at Key West to keep order among the restless refugees waiting resettlement in the United States. The Coast Guard is urging the Cuban government to adhere to international treaties aimed at protecting lives at, lives at sea. Vessels like this one, the Dr. Daniels, were forced to take far more passengers than it has safety equipment for. And getting out of Cuba is still a problem for many. Many of those who have arrived in the States tell horror stories of being beaten by pro-Castro Cubans and secret police. And now reports that the Cuban government has stalled the sea lift operation for at least 12 hours, backing up boats in the refugee crowded port of Mariel. And Pat, once the Cubans get to the States, they find that the harassment continues. As we hear now from Christy Whitker, trouble may have already begun at Union City, New Jersey. The largest group of Cuban refugees to date arrived in New York early this morning after a flight from Miami. The 95 men and one woman were met by volunteers from St. Anthony's Church in Union City and driven to New Jersey, where they spent the night in the basement of St. Anthony's Parish School. This morning, doctors and nurses who'd volunteered their services were examining them, giving inoculations and taking blood samples. But while this was going on in the church, Next door in the school, a bomb scare. That's all they said was evacuate the school. We're going to throw a bomb in the church. What kind of accent did the person have? Uh, no, he, he was an English-speaking person. How long ago did this call come in? Just now? Just these minute when you tried to get into the building. That's why we had to evacuate the school. While the children waited outside, police thoroughly checked all rooms and closets of the school. The church's doors were locked, and most of the refugees were unaware of the bomb threat. People on the scene told me they feared this could be the beginning of an anti-refugee sentiment in the community. But Father Michael Fuero says from what he's seen in his parish, there's no resentment. The uh, response on the part of the uh, American people in the parish was a tremendous uh, uh, experience in love and uh, desire to help these unfortunate people. The coordinators here say they hope to find homes and jobs for 80% of these people by Monday, and then they'll be ready to receive some more. This, even though Hudson County currently has an unemployment rate of 8.5%, and Union City has a rate of 11.1%. But Father Fuero says the calls just keep coming in. One uh, company uh, that called us said they had put ads in the paper for over two weeks, and nobody ever answered the ads. the job? I think it was in a, in a factory sewing. See, most of the people that we have, they are educated. 
and a lot of them have trades. 80% of our group have trades. A new group of refugees is expected early next week, and the North Hudson Council of Mayors has held an emergency meeting and called on the federal government to help. Otherwise, they say the crisis in Cuba will end up as a crisis in New Jersey. A new report out tonight says the number of prisoners in America was at its highest level ever last year. 1.8 million adults were behind bars. That's up 4.4% from 1997 and more than doubled the prison population back in 1985. Three of the nation's most notorious inmates have developed a relationship of sorts, yelling across the yard at Colorado's Supermax prison. As Jim Stewart tells us, an infamous gang leader went to court for permission to join in. It's no accident that convicted Unabomber Ted Kaczynski, World Trade Center terrorist Ramsey Youssef, and Oklahoma City bomber Timothy McVeigh are all housed here in the same super secure federal prison in Florence, Colorado. After all, this is where all the baddest of the bad are kept. But what has surprised prison guards is that lately the three men have begun having small chats in the exercise yard, and now a federal judge has agreed to let this inmate, Luis Felipe, leader of New York's Latin Kings gang, join in the conversation. Felipe was in solitary confinement because somehow, even from prison, he'd managed to order the death of others. But when his lawyer saw that the other big three inmates, Kaczynski, McVeigh, and Yusuf, had allegedly been meeting and talking about everything from the news to what was on television, he petitioned that his client be allowed to join in. The government objected. It is difficult to justify allowing his first contact with other prisoners to be with such relatively sophisticated and dangerous individuals, prosecutors said, even though Felipe himself is serving life plus 45 years for racketeering. The judge disagreed. If Felipe wants to chat with McVeigh or even the reclusive Unabomber, then go ahead, he said. Ramsey Yusuf, on the other hand, was ruled off limits since he still has terrorist connections. So legally, for one hour a day, two days a week, the men can leave their 7 by 12 foot cells and chat all they want. Only now, it turns out, it may not matter. Felipe's lawyer says he has late word that his client has changed his mind. Having won his court battle, the gang leader says he's now going to stay in his cell because he wants nothing to do with the three men that he refers to as those bombers. Jim Stewart, CBS News, Washington. And that's the news later on CBS. 16. Yo, yo, we back. It's your boy, Pop a lot. Mob ties. We on our way to NYC with it. But we're going to have stops in the shy. We also going to come over from Cuba. This is just going to be wow. Now, today we are going to be covering a gentleman by the name of Luis Felipe or King Blood, who is currently serving a life sentence at ADX Florence. Now, if anybody knows him, they're going to know him from his affiliation with the Latin Kings. Now, for those of y'all not familiar with the Latin Kings, it's an organization that started in Chicago that spread to New York that is really heavy in the penitentiary system. And I'm going to say that Louis Philippe has a big part of that, especially in the New York penitentiary system. Now, he came to the United States from Cuba in 1980 in the famed Mario Boatlift. That was depicted in Scarface, where you've seen they had the Cubans in the camp. Um, and pretty much he was incarcerated when he was sent over. Well, he was incarcerated in Cuba and he was released. So if anybody knows anything about the Mario Boatler, Fidel Castro let people that wanted to flee Cuba because they felt like um, it was unjust or for whatever reason, if they wanted to leave Cuba, um, the U.S. agreed to this in the 1980s. But in the process of that, Fidel Castro said he is going to flush Cuba's toilet of all the undesirables. And they said he pretty much sent anybody like that was in men's, mental hospitals, murderers, rapists, pretty much 
the undesirables. And Louis Philippe was part of this group of undesirables. He would end up in Chicago and it was there where he would first come in contact with the Latin Kings. It's not well documented, but six years from when he arrived in the country, he would find himself in New York. And that's where he would start the New York chapter of the Latin Kings in 1986. So now that they're portrayed as a street gang, when it was first started, it was to promote the sense of Hispanic unity amongst prison inmates. So, so it was formed to kind of organize the Caribbean Hispanics that were serving jail sentences. But according to the government, in addition to promoting Hispanic identity, they're going to say that members engage in acts of violence, armed robbery, narcotics trafficking, and even murder. Now, some point after arriving in New York, King Blood would be convicted of manslaughter and almost like an accidental killing or a drunken rage killing of his girlfriend. And he would be sentenced to nine years in prison and he would end up serving that at the Collins Correctional Facility in New York. Being free to roam around and use the phones like other inmates, that's when King Blood will pretty much really make his name because he would end up being charged with six homicides. And the first starting on May of 1993, when King Blood started to get a feeling of insecurity by another popular Latin King by the name of King Mousy, and he figured him to be a threat to his leadership, he would enlist the services of another Latin King by the name of King Little Man to murder King Mousy. Now, five Latin Kings were sent to a building where King Mousy was supposed to be, and it was there where they would shoot and kill King Mousy's brother-in-law, a guy by the name of Victor Hirschman. The gang would end up seriously injuring King Mousy, but they wouldn't kill him. Now, for the failed hit on King Mousy, that would put King Little Man on the chopping block. And four months later, in September of 1993, he would end up being choked to death after they put a green light out on him. King Blood would end up caught up in an 18-count indictment by the feds with the main charge being murder. And he would go on trial for five weeks where the government would present 60 letters written by him and testimony of a lot of his accused targets. And he would end up being convicted on a life sentence. And not only that, they would end up restricting his use of the telephone, his ability to get visits, his ability to receive or send mail. And I want to say that was in upwards of 35 to 45 years. So he pretty much is on an island in Florence ADX. But y'all know what it is, man. It's your boy, Papa Lot. Y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. Y'all make sure y'all hit the bell right under this video so y'all know when this real trail spill shit is dropping. And y'all get in the comment box below. Let me know who we need to cover, where we need to go, what we missed. And y'all already know what it is, man. It's your boy. It's the mob. Mob, mob, mob.